Crimea, the flashpoint for the ongoing invasion of Ukraine. But how did a gesture that was meant to show the quote, boundless trust and love the Russian people feel toward the Ukrainian people end up as the catalyst for the slaughter of Ukrainians at Russian hands? The stage for today's war between Ukraine and Russia was set in the late 1700s. The Crimean Peninsula had been under the rule of the Crimean Khanate for 300 years and was the longest surviving splinter of Genghis Khan's once powerful Golden Horde. The peninsula was bordered by both Russia and the Ottoman Empires, but the presence of a significant number of Turkic Crimean Tatars brought the peninsula under the influence of the Ottomans. In 1768, Western Europe was experiencing a period of weakness after the Seven Years' War, and an increasingly powerful Russia took advantage of the situation to impose its influence on Poland. Guerrilla war soon broke out, though Russian troops managed to suppress most of the uprisings. One group managed to slip away from the Russian troops by crossing over the border into the Ottoman Empire. The Cossacks pursuing them paid no heed to the borders and followed to the town of Balta, where they massacred everyone. Shortly after, war broke out between Russia and the Ottomans. The Ottoman Empire was beset by infighting though, and while technically the superior force with a superior tactical position thanks to their control of the Black Sea, Russia would end up the victor six years later. This marked the rise of Russia as a major European power, and in the peace negotiations that followed, Western Europe states worked to limit the terms of the peace treaty so as to prevent Russia from gaining too much influence in the East. Crimea, however, was annexed by Russia and soon heavily colonized by both Russians and Ukrainians, though with a population that was ultimately mostly Russian. In 1853, Russia once more went to war with the declining Ottoman Empire. Britain and France joined in on the side of the Ottomans to prevent Russia from gaining too much influence over breakaway states of the ever-declining Ottoman Empire. Much of the fighting would take place in Crimea, hence the war earning the name the Crimean War, and it would leave the peninsula devastated economically. Russian persecution of Crimean Tatars led to many being killed or forced to flee the Ottoman Empire, with the Russians ending the practice only because too much farmland was being left unattended. Despite being the focus of much of the fighting, the peninsula remained in Russian hands though. Having lost the war, the Russian Empire went into a decades-long period of decline during which it sought to reinvent itself so as to remain its former status as a major European power. For Crimea though, life would remain largely the same until the Russian Civil War of 1917. Prompted by increasing dissatisfaction over the domestic condition in Russia and a disastrous involvement in World War I, the Russian Revolution began with the Tsar stepping down from power, believing that his removal would calm the ever-increasing social unrest. In his place, the Russian Duma was formed, which was made up of prominent capitalists as well as the Russian nobility and aristocracy. This, however, did not sit well with many people. Though liberated from serfdoms decades before, their liberation had come with vast stipulations that heavily favored the nobility that once lorded over them. The common people thus distrusted the Duma and banded together into Soviets, grassroots community assemblies that sought to bring political power to the lower classes through unity. For a time, the Duma ruled alongside the Soviets, with the Duma in control of the military and international affairs and the Soviets wielding great influence over domestic affairs. With the allegiance of much of the working class and middle classes, the Soviets were too powerful for the Duma to simply disband by force or ignore. Amongst the Soviets was the quickly growing Bolshevik faction, headed by Vladimir Lenin, who campaigned on the slogan of peace, land, and bread. He wished to end the disastrous war against Germany, give land belonging to the nobles to the peasantry, and end the famine caused by Russia's losing war. With thousands of demoralized soldiers coming home from the Eastern Front, the Bolsheviks quickly grew in popularity, and support for the war dwindled. Finally, tensions exploded with the October Revolution, during which the Bolshevik forces stormed Petrograd and overthrew the provisional government, leaving them in power over all of Russia. However, not everyone in Russia accepted Bolshevik rule prompting the Russian Civil War. Russia split into whites and reds, with the white factions consisting of capitalists, imperialists, wishing to see the Tsar restored to power, and various other political factions all supported by the West, who hoped that a white victory would return Russia to the war and continue to put pressure on Germany. Crimea became a stronghold for the white army thanks to its access to the Black Sea, which allowed for easy resupply from Western allies. The peninsula would swap hands multiple times, though, as the bloody war progressed, making it one of the bloodiest places in all of Russia at the time. However, as the war turned against the whites, Crimea would be where they'd make their last stand in 1920. After being defeated, any surviving whites fled to Istanbul and beyond. 50,000 white prisoners of war and civilians would end up massacred after the defeat of the white army. In 1921, the Crimean Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic was created and officially joined with the Soviet Union. Despite claimed autonomy though, Crimea remained very much in control of the Soviet Union, and autonomy did not protect its population from Joseph Stalin's repressions. With tensions rising in the peninsula, Stalin took advantage of the natural famine and worsened it on purpose so as to starve millions of rebellious Ukrainians, including many in Crimea. 
Crimea would once more become the site of atrocities during the German invasion of the Soviet Union in the Second World War. Crimea was highly sought after by the Germans due to its beauty and fertility, and was seen as a crown jewel to be seized and handed over to the German colonists after the war. Thus, it became the site of many of the war's bloodiest battles, until finally falling to the Germans. Despite brutal reprisals, though, the Germans were never able to secure the mountainous areas from a partisan movement that lasted until they themselves were finally expelled by Russian forces. Stalin, however, had his own plans for the ethnic cleansing of Crimea, and followed German persecutions of locals and especially Jews with its forced deportation of Crimean Tatars. The Tatars had their land seized from them and forcibly deported to Central Asia in a bid to destroy them culturally. The Armenians, Bulgarians, and Greeks would follow suit, leaving mostly Russians and Ukrainians behind. The Crimean Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic was also abolished in 1945, with the peninsula being made officially a part of the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic. In 1954, though, the Crimean Peninsula was officially returned to the Ukrainian Republic via a decree from the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet. In a front-page announcement on the official newspaper of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Pravda, the decree read, On April 26, 1954, the decree of the Presidium of the USSR Supreme Soviet transferring the Crimean Oblast from the Russian SFSR to the Ukrainian SSR. Taking into account the integral character of the economy, the territorial proximity, and the close economic and cultural ties between the Crimean province and the Ukrainian SSR, the Presidium of the USSR Supreme Soviet decrees to approve the joint presentation of the Presidium of the Russian SFSR Supreme Soviet and the Presidium of the Ukrainian SSR Supreme Soviet on the transfer of the Crimean province from the Russian SFSR to the Ukrainian SSR. The reason for the transfer of the strategically important peninsula to Ukraine was described as a symbolic gesture, marking the 300th anniversary of the 1654 Treaty of Pereyaslav. However, this doesn't hold up to scrutiny as Pereyaslav is in central Ukraine and nowhere near Crimea, and neither did the treaty affect the peninsula itself. Symbolically, the Communist Party was trying to portray the treaty as the unification between Ukrainians and Russians. But while the treaty was a major step in that direction, plenty of violence remained before Ukrainians and Russians would consider themselves brothers. The real reasons are numerous. Nina Khrushcheva, political scientist and great-granddaughter of Nikita Khrushchev, believed that the transfer of the peninsula to the Ukrainian people was partially symbolic, partially an effort to reshuffle the centralized political system, and also because Khrushchev had always been fond of Ukraine. She believed that it was a gesture from her great-grandfather to what was his favorite republic. However, Sergei Khrushchev, son of Nikita Khrushchev, claimed that the decision was due to the building of a hydroelectric dam on the Dnieper River and a desire for the administration of the Ukrainian territory to be under a single body. Thus, ceding the peninsula back to the Ukrainian Republic was a measure of convenience. Other reasons, though, include the integration of the Ukrainian and Crimean economies and the belief that Crimea was a natural extension of the Ukrainian steppes. There was even some desire to repopulate Crimea with Slavs after the expulsions of the Crimean Tatars by Stalin in 1944. One effect of the transfer, however, was the unifying of the Ukrainian and Russian people. Savatopol in Crimea was the home of the Soviet Black Sea Fleet and an all-important naval base for the Soviets, through which they could influence the Black Sea and the Mediterranean and beyond. By transferring the peninsula, it bound Ukraine closer to Russia, and even the 1954 posters announcing the event ran with the slogan, Eternally Together. Whatever the reasons, the transferring of the peninsula did indeed bring the Russian and Ukrainian people closer together, resulting in great benefit to both. However, as the Soviet Union began to disintegrate in 1989, Ukraine declared its independence shortly after, taking Crimea along with it. This suddenly put the Russian Navy in a very disadvantageous position in the Black Sea, further impacting its ability to influence the Mediterranean. Vladimir Putin vowed to resolve that situation and took advantage of a political strife in Ukraine in 2014 to forcibly annex the peninsula. Putin claimed that he was merely responding to the request of a majority Russian population to be part of the Russian Federation. Crimea would end up emboldening Putin, however, and fueling his support for breakaway republics in eastern Ukraine. Claims were made that these republics too contained a majority of citizens who wanted to rejoin Russia, and public referendums were held that showed support in favor of leaving Ukraine. Though these results were immediately disputed since no independent sources were allowed to verify the voting and the results weren't recognized by either the Ukrainian government or any UN member countries. This only added to the tension of the ongoing Russo-Ukrainian war, which has now lasted until at least 2022, and following Putin's decision to invade all of Ukraine, it doesn't appear to be ending anytime soon. What happens next in Ukraine is anyone's guess, though the current invasion is going disastrously for Russia. 
And in just the first two weeks of fighting, Russia lost more men and equipment than the United States did in 20 years of fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. Even if Russia succeeds in defeating the Ukrainian military, it's impossible for its army to secure the entire country against a raging insurgency hell-bent on expelling Russian troops from their native soil. With so much political goodwill destroyed between Russia and Ukraine, and with the blacklisting of Russia internationally, along with the staggering losses in lives and equipment, even if Russia wins in Ukraine, it will still have lost the war. Now go check out what happens when a country declares war or click this other video instead.